to ask, does insulin shadow fat burning and can you quickly explain how it works? So absolutely it does, yes. Uh, but it, it's not so much that it just shuts off fat burning, it turns on fat storage at the same time. So in the body, we imagine a fat cell is like a balloon and you've got some fat in the bloodstream in the form of fatty acids or triglycerides and you've got some glucose in the bloodstream and the the way we have fat in the blood you would have heard of something called triglyceride now a triglyceride is a chemical a, a glycerol background and three fatty acids attached to it and that's got four things lumped together and that's too big that's too big to get into a fat cell however insulin can activate an enzyme that chops it apart and allows the fatty acids to get into the fat cell so without insulin the fat doesn't get inside the fat cell with insulin the fat does get in there now once the fatty acids are in there you've also got something called the glucose needs to get into the cell as well or, or and insulin also helps with that and then when it's inside the cell these can coalesce and form the stored version of fat now for the fat though if you wanted to burn the fat you have to leave the cell so you have to snip this triglyceride molecule back up again before it can leave the fat cell and there's an enzyme that will do that and insulin stops that enzyme from working so on one side of the equation insulin allows the fat to get into the cell and on the other side insulin stops the fat from leaving the cell so absolutely by effect and these enzymes they're called lipoprotein lipase and hormone sensitive lipase and by its impact on those two enzymes insulin absolutely um, increases fat storage and inhibits fat burning so as much carbohydrates and as more often we eat carbohydrates, as more we store fat and shadow fat burning, pretty much, in a simplified... Well, so it, it, under the, what you're referring to, there is a tendency for carbohydrates in the diet to release insulin from the pancreas. And as far as, yeah, that's effectively true. So eating carbohydrate will release insulin and that insulin will then turn on fat storing and stop fat burning okay great yeah i love all this because all these topics are very controversial and especially amongst all different health and fitness professionals they sometimes try to tell us otherwise and i'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this and clarifying it for everyone um, the next question about insulin I have is relating to brain trauma. Can you please tell us about your research on treating concussions with ketogenic diet? And just in a nutshell, how does the relationship between insulin and brain works? So the thing about the brain is it's 2% of the body's weight and it uses 20% of the body's energy it's an energy fiend it, it's so hungry for energy so because it's so metabolically active that makes it very vulnerable to metabolic disease and that's why we now call dementia for example type 3 diabetes now what that means is so type, when we look at conditions like diabetes we have a condition called insulin resistance where insulin doesn't work normally so where one of the jobs of insulin is to help sugar get into cells, to help glucose get inside cells. And in dementia, we've got this level of insulin resistance where the insulin's not working properly. So brain cells or neurons that require glucose, they can't get the glucose. The glucose is knocking on the door, but it can't get in. So you end up with an energy deficiency. These neurons are starved of energy, so they can't work properly. And that's what we see in dementia. We see basically areas where the brain is not functioning properly, malfunctioning, what we call hypo, underfunctioning. Now, interestingly, is that when we get concussed, that causes insulin resistance as well. Now, you can cause insulin resistance over a long time. You can actually damage the functioning of the insulin receptors with both seed oils, these phytosterols, these chemicals in seed oils, or with 
a product produced by your liver when you consume too much sugar. They're called ceramides. Now both phytosterols and ceramides can actually stop the insulin receptor working properly. So you can get insulin resistance from diet or a sudden concussive impulse can cause insulin resistance very quickly. It will actually, the insulin receptor is very complex and it sits in a part of the cell membrane called a lipid raft and it's vulnerable to traumatic damage. So seed oils and excess sugars will damage where the insulin receptor sits, but so too will a sudden concussive impact. So we actually have regions of the brain that end up being starved of glucose immediately after a concussive injury. And then unfortunately, because of that, we have failure of things called iron pumps and so on and so forth. And this energy deficiency actually leads to a, a large amount of oxidative stress happening within the brain. And that oxidative stress then results in even more damage happening to the brain. Now, fortunately, we can actually take a lesson here from dementia. So we know that people with dementia tend to have brains that are resistant to insulin, so they can't use glucose normally. But there is an alternative. There's something called ketone bodies or a ketone, which is an alternative form of energy that can be used by these brain neurons and it doesn't need the action of insulin. So all we have to do is to provide you with ketones and then your brains, those cells which are not working properly, they can suddenly start to work again. So the big problem with concussion though is that you'll recall that I said you get that oxidative damage um, and that happens in the hours after a concussive injury. So if we can somehow find a way to provide those cells with damaged insulin receptors with a ketone supply of energy before that oxidative damage occurs, then we can potentially ameliorate this second wave of damage from concussion and we can facilitate your recovery from the concussion. So in essence, it's understanding that there is a lot of similarities between a demented brain and a concussed brain and ketones can be useful for both. Now the problem obviously is that this damage happens within hours and if you were to start a ketogenic diet, it takes probably about four days to get therapeutic levels of ketones in your blood. And that's obviously the horse has gone bolted already then. So realistically, you probably need to be on a ketogenic diet before you get concussed, or potentially you need to be taking lots of ketone supplements. Okay, interesting. So what if someone has got the post-concussion syndrome like 6 to 12 months later after the concussion, they still have the symptoms? Would ketogenic diet help them? So there hasn't been a lot of research there on that, but there, there, has, there is one paper that's been done on prolonged symptoms of concussion, and they certainly found improve, some improvements there. Um, so the evidence as early as it is would suggest that yes, there is absolutely benefit there. 